Well, that wasn't great. KU smoked by Arkansas in their exhibition. We break down the game and a recap on today's Locked on Jayhawks. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. This is Locked on Jayhawks. You can find our show anywhere you get your podcast, including on our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe to the show. Thank you to the everydayers tuning into each and every show. Thank you for making it your first listen every day. And you can give me a follow as well at D Johnson Radio on Twitter. KU falls to Arkansas 85-69. to Certainly not the ideal performance you were hoping for in the first exhibition game for KU. Obviously some key injuries that they were without some key players. We'll get into what this all means, what happened, does it mean anything. Some game awards uh, as part of our game recaps. We're going to be doing that this year. And then what's next for KU. This episode of the show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Thankfully, I don't believe you could bet on the game on FanDuel, so you couldn't have lost money. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started today. So Arkansas 85, Kansas 69, obviously not the best performance to kick things off. And, you know, especially when you view it from, okay, the last time we saw this team, they were getting ran off the court by Gonzaga, and you just didn't feel like you had a cleansing moment in this game, even though it didn't end up happening. Um, I think the thing that I'm most concerned with, just to kind of rip that Band-Aid off right here, is that you still don't really have a bunch of guys who can beat people off the dribble consistently. Now, Arkansas is a athletic team. Like, that's what happens with John Calipari teams. You get a lot of these five-star kids who are super athletic, super fast, super quick. So not everybody you play is going to be that athletic to be able to stop you off the ball, right, to where there will be better matchups for some teams. And even the Kansas team that won a title a couple years ago, like, they weren't a great matchup when they had to play uber athletic teams. And fortunately they didn't have to play, you know, a ton of those in their NCAA tournament path, but um, because, you know, they lost by 20 points to a John Calipari team too. But um, point being like, I am a little bit concerned with that. Like you saw Dewan Harris be able to do it pretty consistently actually in this game, which was nice to see Zeke Mayo hit a, a nice three early. He ended up with seven points, but that wasn't really something that he is expected to be doing and didn't do consistently in the game is, you know, athletically beat people off the dribble. He's more of a, you know, three point shooter type of guy, um, create a three point shot type of guy. Um, you know, with, with AJ store, you didn't really see it with, I don't know. You just didn't really see that creation off the dribble. And while I didn't expect it to be, you know, this super athletic team from KU's standpoint, I wasn't expecting this to be a great athletic team. I don't know that I thought it was going to be that stark of a contrast when they did play Arkansas, even knowing some of that stuff with what typically John Calipari teams look like. And I think you saw that on the defensive end too. Arkansas was able to get a lot of open shots, I would say, driving or on pick and roll or, you know, guards penetrating through the lane. I mean, both of their young guards with Boogie Flan and and Wagner ended up with over 20 points in the game. A lot of reason was because of that. Like Arkansas, I thought early in the game, they were just making some good shots. They only ended up six of 24 from three and they still whooped you. So those are not good things that make me feel better. I will say to give a little positives here, like I did like Dewan Harris being more aggressive offensively. It was nice to see that's in his game and that he could do that in, you know, it wasn't just a game where he went seven of seven from three. Like, Yes, he did shoot well from three, but he did it in a myriad of ways. Um, I, I like the fact that you were without Hunter Dickinson and you still led Arkansas in points in the paint, offensive rebounds, and second chance points. So, like that stuff should only get even better when Hunter Dickinson's back in the lineup. Obviously, no Jonas I do for Arkansas, and that helped KU a little bit there, but still. Um, and it's also impossible to know without the key pieces there. Like, I mean, it, Yes, again, Arkansas is missing Jonas I do. He might end up being the starting center for them. He's a good player. Kansas was out three without three of their top, what, eight players? You you could say top seven, honestly. Like, I mean, you could argue that Hunter Dickinson's their best player, right? Um, you know, maybe you'd argue somebody else, but I, I think he probably would be at the top of that argument. Regardless, he's in the conversation. I mean, he's your all-American candidate, right? 
you could argue that Rylan Griffin ends up being a starter on this team. At the very least, if he's not, he's going to be playing a lot of minutes off the bench. So he'll be your sixth guy probably if he's not starting. And then with Shaquille Moore, like, you know, I guess it depends. Like, is Floyd Badunga technically the second guy? What happens if Shaquille Moore is really your seventh guy because he's playing more minutes, even though your backup center is always in the rotation? So there's a chance you were missing three of your top seven or three of your top eight guys. And obviously that's going to have a big impact, especially when, you know, some of these things you're talking about defense and athleticism. Well, that's Shaquille Moore to a T or um, with Rylan Griffin. Like I would say he's a pretty good athlete, you know? Um, So, and with Hunter Dickinson, it at least gives you size inside, which I don't know, maybe changes things a little bit in terms of teams driving. I I don't know. Uh, It's an exhibition though, that you were, without your probable leading point score, leading rebound getter, and your first option on offense, and we've heard Bill Self call Shaquille Moore the best on-ball defender on the team, and you could argue that Ryland Griffin is the team's best three-point shooter. Those are a lot of bests on the team to be without in this game. So Kansas is going to be okay. Could you make the argument that if the expectation placed upon this team is to be the number one team in the country, which is the expectation that was given to them by the AP poll, that even despite some of those losses, even despite not having some of those players, that you should still be able to weather the storm and beat a team who's predicted to be worse? Okay, maybe there's a little bit of truth in that. Could you also say that there's some truth in the fact that, you know, it would have been okay if you would have lost close. Like if you would have lost by four, five, six points, it would have been okay. But the fact that you got smoked shows that there are more signs of of problems than you might have hoped for. Yeah, maybe there's some truth to that. Um, What about the fact that the whole point of this offseason, the whole point of what Bill Self did with the transfer portal of bringing players in, the whole point of that was, again, going back to the quote about wanting eight starters and wanting extra depth for – Kind of this exact scenario. I mean, it's not just this scenario. It's, you know, motivation, it's competition, it's, you know, being able to go to the bench, game in and game out. But it's also a little bit of this scenario where, hey, you have some injuries, some players are out, some players are not going to play. You still need to be able to be competent. You still need to be able to be good. And if that was the goal, then all the extra depth they loaded up on surely didn't show up in how this one went. So was the goal of that, did it not end up coming to fruition? Again, maybe there's a little bit of truth in that too. Here's the thing. Arkansas is a top 25 opponent. I don't know. Maybe they end up being even better than that. Like, um, remember last year, KU loses. That was a closer game, obviously, but they lose at Illinois. And obviously KU ended up having their own problems last year, but that Illinois team ended up being really good. They made the Elite Eight. They had, I don't know, one of the best offenses in the entire country. You lost them in a closest game on the road. What if Arkansas ends up being a top-10 team in the country? I mean, they're going to have one of the best backcourts in the country, right? The, with what they showed, like Wagner looks much improved. John L. Davis coming off the bench, like that's such a big luxury for them. And then uh, Boogie Fland looks like the real deal. They're going to have, if that's the case every game, one of the best backcourts in the country, and they've got other talent around them. Like, what if Arkansas just is a top 10 team this team, this year? And Arkansas is a very tough place to play. Like, that is a top 25 home court environment. It's probably much higher than that. Um, and so, you know, you can say that, well, the whole point of the offseason was to load up on more depth to overcome losses and injuries like this one. But it's another thing when, like, like, Okay, there's never been a whole point of, hey, let's load up on depth so that if our star player gets in, like, it's like the Chiefs. It's like, hey, we load it up with where we're going to try to, you know, get all the best players and get the best defense in the world. But if Patrick Holmes goes down, it doesn't matter. You know, you can have all the, the extra plans to have good depth and have good players behind. But if your best player, if your All-American candidate goes down, that's another thing. And also, it, it's almost like the added depth was more about, okay, can your bench make an impact game to game? And it was also more about like, okay, listen, even if you were healthy, you could easily lose on the road against Arkansas. The difference is you want your depth to be good enough that you don't get blown out in a Big 12 tournament game to like a nine-seed Cincinnati. That is what you're trying to avoid, not as much this. At least, I don't know, maybe kind of what I'm thinking here. So not ideal of how much you lost by that you never really felt like you were in the game after maybe the first quarter 
Um, who knows what Arkansas ends up being, but with all the injuries and it being an exhibition game, I, I think KU is going to be fine. I also view it a little bit as you're still in that early portion of the season. And also we've seen KU get blown out by John Calipari teams and be okay. So maybe that's part of it too. Um, but when I think about this Kansas team, like if you're just going with the Jimmies and the Joes, like they have a lot of solid players, a lot of good college players. You know, there is very much talent on this roster. But if you're just going with the pure talent of the Kansas roster versus the Arkansas roster, if you're looking at it from like an NBA perspective, say for instance, you know, maybe you go with the Arkansas roster. But what is the advantage that Kansas has? They have the best coach in college basketball and Bill Self. That's not going to give as much of an advantage in the first game when you're not running all your plays and figuring out your defensive system. Probably a little bit more, you know, roll the ball out and see what happens from KU in this game than you will have later in the season. So uh, not really concerning, but not a good thing either. That's for sure. All right, let's continue on. What are our game awards? We'll get to that new segment that we're going to be doing in post-game recaps for KU basketball next. First, this episode of the show is brought to you by Z-Biotics Pre-Alcoholic Probiotic Drink. It's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink alcohol, it gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration. That's the blame for your next rough day. Pre-alcohol it produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow. Step one, for best result, make pre-alcohol your first drink of the night. Step two, drink responsibly, pace yourself, hydrate, and get a good night's sleep. And step three, enjoy tomorrow, wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on college to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use code locked on college at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on college and use the code locked on college at checkout for 15% off. This episode of Locked on Jayhawks is also brought to you by Prize Picks. What is Prize Picks? Well, it's the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on prize picks and with prize picks it's the best way to get your action on sports in over 30 states including california florida georgia and texas it's the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy so your lineups stay in play even if one of your players gets injured if your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return prize picks keeps your lineup live that is such a nice feature so download the app today use code locked on college to get $50 $50 off instant or $50 instantly, not off $50 instantly after you place your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app today and use code locked on college for $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. That is with prize picks. All right, continuing on, thank you to the everydayers tuning into each and every show. Thanks for making this your first listen every day. You can check out Locked On College Basketball, Locked On College Football for your second listen. Uh, check out our KUK State preview as that one gets ready on Saturday night. All right, our game trophies. This is going to be, you know, if, if you're new to the show, uh, we typically have done in the past for basketball, and we will continue to do this for football. We do our goats of the game. We have the good goats, which is like the greatest of all times, new adage of the word. We have the bad goats, which is the old adage of the word, which is kind of like the scapegoat. Well, we're going to do something a little bit different. We'll leave that for football. We're going to do this for basketball. So we're going to do game awards for basketball, and some of these will be consistent awards. Others will be new awards each game depending how we see fit. So one of them that we're going to have that is a consistent award is our offensive MVP. And that would be Dewan Harris. Uh, Dewan Harris, 26 points, 11 of 17 shooting. He was four of five from three-point range. You could probably say he was the overall MVP of the game for KU, although Bill Self said in the post game that that would actually be Rakeese Passmore. So you know, I guess if we're going to Bill, that would be the answer there. But as far as offensive MVP, I thought Dewan was was really good. And KU didn't have a lot going for it on offense in this game. And Arkansas was defending them pretty well, which uh, that was even without Jonas Idu, a really good defensive center. So uh, Dewan gets the offensive MVP in this game. Normally, I'm going to give a defensive MVP. I had trouble kind of coming up with who that would be. So not applicable 
on this one. I think KU certainly had their defensive issues in this one. And uh, I don't know that, you know, I, I guess I could go with like somebody who had a couple steals or, you know, Flory maybe getting some action with blocks, but like, I don't think anybody had like a great defensive game to earn singling out uh, in terms of that. Okay. Uh, what about the Remy Martin season opening award? That's going to go to one AJ store. I don't know if people remember this. Obviously, everybody remembers the finish to Remy Martin. You know, people probably, a lot of people remember some of the beginning of Remy Martin and some of the early games he had. I certainly remember, was it like Tarleton State where he had to hit like a big shot late for KU to seal the game? I don't know how many people remember this part. KU's first game of the 2021 to 22 season, it was the Champions Classic against Michigan State. Do you know how many points Remy Martin had in the first half of that game? Correct answer is zero. Do you know how many shots Remy Martin had in the first half of KU season opening game? The correct answer, also zero. Doesn't that seem crazy for Remy Martin, a guy who is this shot first point guard, who his best skill is being a bucket for you, had zero shots in KU's first half. And they didn't really need him. I mean, Ochai was going off. KU, you know, dominated that game. But. It was almost like in that game, because you heard all offseason that you, you knew Remy Martin was this gifted offensive player and talent and, and score, but you heard all offseason from Bill Self trying to get him to play their way and do some of the other things, do some of the little things that make them win there. It's a lot of similar stuff that we're hearing about AJ Store, who AJ Store is this very, you know, accomplished player. He's a very talented offensive player overall. But now you're coming into a new system, you're being asked by a Hall of Fame coach to do you know, to get even more out of your game, to do other specific things that maybe you haven't been, um, you know, forced to do at, at, at much of the level that you have to do now at Kansas. And it almost felt like in that first half of that first game that Remy Martin played at KU, he was almost trying to prove a point. He was like, hey, I don't need to shoot. Like, I'll do all the, the other things you wanted me to do. I don't need to shoot. And that's how I kind of felt watching AJ Store tonight. I think specifically in the first half. I think overall for the game, you know, he ended up getting some shots up. But I felt like you didn't really notice much in the first half. And it felt a little bit to me like he wasn't in his element that I do wonder if there is a lack of comfortability there for AJ Store that now he's kind of in his head about like, you know, listen, my the normal best part about my game is I'm a bucket. I can score the basketball. But now he's thinking about all these other things. And to be clear, he's, he does need to, you know, be a better rebounder and be a better defender. Like, those things aren't just going to help KU and help him. It's going to help him go higher as a possible NBA draft pick. But you can't let it take away your main identity. You, the reason that you are here, the reason you got second team all Big Ten, that you got as much money as you probably did in the transfer portal, that you got as much attention in the portal, and that Kansas brought you to begin with, was because of your scoring. And yes, they want to add those other things to your game, but you cannot lose your original identity. And that's what it kind of felt like a little bit in this one. So definitely feels like this could be kind of an underlying story to the season with Bill Self and AJ Store kind of clashing and, and trying to figure out how things work. Um, if we're going to go with our improved chances at a role award, I would definitely throw Rakees Passmore in there. We mentioned Bill Self calling him the MVP of the game for KU. He had 11 points, four of seven shooting, six rebounds. Actually ended up playing one more minute, 19 to 18, than what AJ Store ended up playing. So definitely feels like uh, Rakees is earning his way into you know a regular rotational role for KU. I think Shaquille Moore had an improved chance because when Dewan Harris wasn't in at point guard, you saw KU struggle even more. And was that just uh, part of Dewan having a really good offensive night and David Coit going 0 for 5, which isn't always going to happen? Yeah, but it didn't look as comfortable out there all the way. So it feels like Shaquille Moore could be that guy who has that best chance to be kind of the backup point guard minutes when Dewan does go on the bench, specifically, even though he didn't end up playing. And also, when you need athleticism and defense, it's like, okay, well, Shaquille Moore would be perfect to come in and uh, help you out with that. And then, honestly, like if we're talking about roles, like maybe – Rylan Griffin's chances of starting go up now, right? You saw AJ Store struggle a little, little bit. Um, KU goes seven of 23 from three. They go four of 10 at the free throw line. They could certainly use more shooting out there. Well, maybe it ends up being Rylan Griffin. And then the uh, last award we're giving out here, the I Can't Guard or Stay in Front of Boogie Fland Award. That goes to everyone on KU because nobody could slow that dude down. All right, what's next for KU? That on the other side. Our episode of Locked on Jayhawks is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, where you can get Kansas at 
10 to 1 odds to win the national title at FanDuel. Maybe you're not feeling that after this exhibition. So uh, you could short them. You could go to the Big 12 odds and you know pick Houston at like plus 250 to win the Big 12 instead of them. I, I don't know. Uh, take it wherever you want to go. But you can get on NFL games. You can get on college football. You can get on the World Series. There's so much going on right now. And you can get that season going with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of any game, you check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That is at FanDuel.com, the official sportsbook partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, finishing things up on this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. Make sure you're subscribed to the show. If you give us a thumbs up, it certainly helps if you're watching on our YouTube channel. Uh, we will have another episode probably on Sunday afternoon, recapping whatever happens in the KUK State game. So what is next for KU men's basketball? Well, they're going to have their exhibition game against Washburn on Tuesday. And uh, obviously, if you struggle in that one, that is even more of an indictment. But, you know, Washburn actually has a pretty good team. Um MIAA, uh, they were picked to win it, so which is a very good conference in D2. So that'll be interesting. But obviously, KU should be able to cruise through that one. And uh, it'll be a good opportunity to – you just hope you get like guys like Hunter Dickinson back and whoever. And you could say, well, it's another exhibition. Why even play them if they're going through injury? Well, you do want them to shake the rust off a little bit before the actual season starts, especially knowing you know you have the Champions Classic, you have North Carolina in, in, in your first handful of games. But that one's coming up on Tuesday night back in Allen Fieldhouse. And then after that, it is the real thing. You're playing Howard in your season opener, and then you have North Carolina – then you have Michigan State off the rip. So not a ton of time to really figure everything out. And that is the, you know, like we talked about earlier, like there is some positives to getting more reps for guys like Flory Badunga and Zach Clements and whoever else in case you need them by not having Hunter and Ryland Griffin and stuff. But the negative is now they have less reps playing all together and figuring out you know, how to be in sync with each other, that it's one less opportunity that you had to do that before the season does start with those really tough games right off the rip. But that'll do it for this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. You can find our show anywhere you get your podcasts, including on our YouTube page. Again, we'll be back for a KUK State recap later this weekend. So thanks for joining us on today's show and see you then.